Hey there, Shalligators. Today, let's talk about the new Kardashian trailer that dropped. Now look, I know, I know. Some of you guys are like, I hate the Kardashians. I get it. I mean, I don't. <laughs> you know, I just, I find them so interesting. And I, there are just so many of them that there is bound to be something within the depths, the bowels of the Kardashian empire that you can relate to, or at the very least we can learn from. And today is no exception. So they released a trailer for the new season of their Hulu show. Uh, what do you guys think about their Hulu show versus the old one they had that was on E? I hear... I hear most of you guys saying you like the Hulu one better because it feels more authentic. I actually think the other one was way more authentic. I don't know. What do you think? This one just seems very, very contrived. This new season, though, seems like it's maybe going to be a little bit more exciting. The last season was fucking useless. Like, it drove me insane that Kim and Pete Davidson were all over everything. They were everywhere. They were on each other's Instagrams. And not one word about their breakup on the show. Like, girl, I'm sorry. You're in for a penny. You're in for a pound. This is your job. You introduced him into evidence. You have, I do believe, like the obligation to say what happened. And I think, did we do a video at the time on like, when you had a very public romance, how do you break up? Like, do you have a public divorce? Do you have a public breakup? Do you like put a statement? It's just like a normal civilian person on your Instagram. I, I'm pretty sure we did that. Search it. I have a whole playlist on the Kardashians and Pete Davidson. It's in there. But today I want to talk about their new trailer because I let you guys vote on my Instagram <clears throat> and I could do another, I might do a second video on this for the runner up question. <sighs> so I gave you guys basically, I'll break it down. I'm just, my thoughts are all over the place. I am completely exhausted today, but I still wanted to get this video out for you guys because I love you and I'm a professional and I have no real life. That's really the key. But before we get started, just a quick word from today's sponsor. Hey, Shalligators. We know that as women, there are so many beauty things that we stress about unnecessarily. Like I read an article like, are your cuticles aging you? Miss me with that. But one thing that isn't silly to stress about are hair and hair loss. Because look, some guys look sexy bald. Women, ah, we don't exactly have a Jason Statham, right? There's not a female Jason Statham. No, there's a company that I've been looking into because this is legitimately something I stress about a lot, a lot. And it's called MD Hair. It is the world's first medical grade hair regrowth treatment. And best of all, it's customized to you. Okay, so here's what you do. You go to the website and you take their little hair quiz and you submit pictures of your scalp. And you might be thinking like, oh, it's medical grade. It's like pure chemicals. No, this is very, very clean beauty. It's not tested on animals. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so. The treatment plan is fourfold. You have scalp treatment, which is a serum that you put on your hair. I'll do it in a second. You have activated shampoo and conditioner, customized hair wellness supplements, ah, and my favorite, marine collagen peptides. But let's try the serum. Oh yeah. And we're gonna put it in, down in there. It smells very clean and fresh. Oh, kind of like a baby, but not annoying like a baby. It's not oily. It literally feels like water. And it'll dry, and then once it dries, you just comb it through your hair. So click the link down below to get your customized hair treatment plan and use my code SHALLON70 to save 70% off your first month. Okay, so there was a lot in this trailer, like a lot. First of all, Chloe has a melanoma on her face. Like she had stitch, like stitches on her face. That is really scary. That's, that's terrible and scary. You know, it's not, I don't see these girls as being like sun bums, you know, they're just like laying out like lizards all the time. And I don't think anyone at this point in their lives of human society is going to like tanning salons, right? <laughs> Do you know anyone who does that? Do you know any tanorexic? It's girl. I don't even really love a spray tan. All my friends got one today because we're going up to the lake this weekend. And I'm like, I'm okay. Like as long as my skin is even toned, I think it's fine if it's pale. You know, maybe in the summer, like going to Mexico or something, sure. But like a date, I don't know. Pale is fine. Pale is the new tan. So I feel bad for Chloe. I mean, this seems, this seems crazy. And you know what? I, I hate to say this. I really believe in the mind-body connection. And when we are stressed, we are releasing cortisol. We're releasing the stress hormone. And when we do that, we're creating heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. I mean, this this is science. This isn't like woo-woo. 
And I just feel like Chloe has been so, through so much over the last few years. Not like she's an innocent bystander in this. She is absolutely participating in the bullshit outcomes of her life. I would not be surprised that her body is breaking down or cells are going haywire and bad stuff is getting in. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. So her plot line seems dark. Also, have you noticed it odd that everyone was like, Kylie, what's your son's name? Wow, when are we going to see him? And no one says shit about Chloe's son. Remember him? The surrogate son? that she was completely disassociated from when she got him at the hospital. I mean, she wasn't even looking at him. Her eyes were darting around. She had a mask on. She didn't need to have a mask on. She wasn't crying. She wasn't looking. She was, you, can, you, can even, you can tell what a mask even when someone is smiling. She wasn't smiling. She was not connected. I can't say I blame her because she had just found out Tristan had had a baby with someone else. Like, remember that? Where is that boy? She never posts him. And one thing I found very, very interesting, very interesting, is that subsequently after that, like the baby had already been born. It was, I can't remember when it was, but I, rem I remember knowing 100% that baby had been born. She referred to Tristan as her daughter's father. Not my kid's father. Not my son and my daughter. My daughter. I don't know what that means, but I don't think it means anything good. I don't think it means anything good. Are they renting a baby for this episode? I don't know. What's going to happen next season? Is there a place you can rent a baby? I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right, actually. Thanks. So there's the Chloe plot line. Kendall, I'm sure, has none. She just sits there with no makeup, looking sour. Got it. Uh, Chris, who cares? I'm sure she's drunk and talking about getting finger blasted by Corey. because She's always saying something like weird and inappropriate. Even though I love you, Chris. I love you. My, you and my mom look the same. And... Kim's plot line, and so I let you guys vote on what three topics we kind of got out of this, and there were three. Kylie's fake accountability, which is what we're going to cover. Courtney feeling upstaged on her wedding day. I don't give a fuck what's wrong with Courtney. I just don't care about her and Travis. I could not. It's like an aggressive form of apathy, like like aggressive boredom. You're like, ah, you're like yawning, angry. Ah. I just, I don't care. I hope she did upstage you. I hope so. That. Team Kim. And then the last topic was Kim's rebound with Pete gone wrong. I just, I just really feel for her because after ugh, Kanye is a nightmare. Again, not like Kim had no part in the outcomes in her life. She married this man and she continued to have children with him and continued to like let him around. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there, but nobody... Nobody in this family, nobody in life is a complete and total victim. Very few people. People who went through the Holocaust, yes, correct. The Cambodian genocide, absolutely. Yep, uh-huh, all those things. I'm talking about like interpersonal relationships. No, girl, because you're still around, right? You're still around. Anyway, I felt bad for her that after all she endured with Kanye, I was so happy for her with Pete. I didn't get it, but it, it just made me happy. You know, again, he seemed, like we said in previous videos, just normal, like a normal, maybe kind of trashy, but okay, fine. If that comes with normalcy, trash bag it up, Kim. Staten Island it all the way to the bedroom. And I just felt so sorry for her when it ended. And we have said before that it must have been him who dumped her. Because if she had dumped him, she would be calm. She would have this narrative, you know, this pretty little narrative. I think he dumped her and she literally, it's too much for her to even speak on. She can't even fake it for the camera. And she's a better actress, actress than we all think. All of them are, you know? You can't say that they have no talent and then say that the show is made up and scripted. You can't say, you know? You gotta pick a lane. If they have no talent, then they're being super real on camera. But if it's scripted, well then their talent is going with the scripted narrative and selling it to the point that people still wanna watch it. Okay? So I feel like even if she can't even, if that family can't even come up with some spin on this, oof, she's down bad. Like, and she, she seemed it. In this trailer, she was crying. Ah. You know, her ugly cry. She's not an ugly cry. I don't know why people say that. She's a normal crier. I'm way worse. I, yeah. You, 
you guys have seen it. I'm like, hmm, how could I describe it? I don't have to. It's in many of these videos on the internet. Got it. Yeah, I just, she seems wrecked by this. Wrecked. And we talked about like, or I asked you to vote, when your rebound goes wrong. And then you're left with not only the feeling of the rebound collapsing, but the thing you were running from in the first place. The relationship you were bouncing from. I think we should do a second video on that because it's interesting. But in this one, I want to talk about Kylie. Ah, Kylie. What are you doing? What are you doing? So we don't know the entirety of what's going to go on in these scenes because it's just the trailer, just the snippets. But Kylie says, like in a family meeting, through her face that barely moves, all of us need to have a bigger conversation about the beauty standards we're setting. All of us need to have a bigger conversation about the beauty standards we're setting. Then it cuts to her with Stassi and her being like, I just wish I'd never even touched anything. Ostensibly referring to her plastic surgery. Can I just say that when she's like, people think about all this plastic surgery on my face. I, they mix these terms on purpose. They are semantic. Let's not forget Kim's a lawyer. Okay. Wording is everything. And I am also a wordsmith. I'm a rhetorician. Don't pull that shit with me, Kylie. People think I've had all this plastic surgery on my face and I haven't. Fillers aren't plastic surgery. They're injections. It's not the same thing. I don't think you've had any plastic surgery on your face. Like under gassed out unconscious knife scalpel surgery. No, I don't think you've done anything like that but you have done it to your body. And she didn't say that part. She didn't say that part. She said, I haven't had any plastic surgery on my face. I know that. You've had it from the neck down. She's had breast implants. I mean, her boobs are huge and now they're saggy and full of stretch marks. Her words, I'm not saying this. That's what she said about her own postpartum body. And she's put in all this filler, fat transfers, butt implants, whatever it is. She looks like a centaur. I'm sorry, but like every time I see a picture of her body, I'm like, what has this girl done to herself? She had a totally cute little figure. But even in spite of all that, Kylie is a lot thinner now than I think we've ever seen her. Ozempic? Are they all on Ozempic? Probably. I bet they are a little pissed. <laughs> they were kind of late to the party that like their doctor didn't tell them about it, you know? And there's like wieners out there like me who are on it. Listen, obviously I don't have a problem with anyone being on a zombie because that's what you want to do, great, good for you. But like, I just appreciate people who are honest about their body, you know, in general. And I knew, I mean, I was definitely, when I started taking, I was like, do I tell people about this? I'm like, what am I, they're gonna notice that I lose weight, hopefully. And what am I gonna say? I don't want to lie. I got to walk it like I talk it. You know my my thing with celebrities. You're not obligated to say what's going on with your body, but if you are going to talk about it, you need to tell the truth. You need to tell the truth. Or you could just be like, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But if you are, just don't lie. And so I'm like, okay, well, I will eventually have to say why I'm thinner. Just tell the truth, man. And the response is 99.9% .9 positive. It is so incredibly positive. So, but you know, the Kardashians, they're never going to fess up. They're never going to fess up. And Kylie, I feel bad for her in like with her body because I know, I, I get why she went on Ozempic because after her second baby, she was, she was big. She, and she talked about it. You know, she talked about how fat she felt and she's like, I hate my postpartum body. Or then she's like, but I love it. I mean, I love it. The saggy tits and the, all the extra weight. I love it. Girl, you can be like, I hate this. I hate this. Moms, have you found that it's harder to lose the weight after the second baby? I feel like I've noticed this on like my friends and also celebrities. That first baby, your body bounces back and then you get cocky. and You're like, ooh, I can do that. I can have 10 babies. And after the second one, your body's like, ah, oh, nah, we're good. We're just going to stay here. Maybe you're just busier and you have more stress and you're, you have that cortisol and it's like keeping the weight on. I don't know, but like I've seen it a lot. Like it seems a lot harder to lose that second baby weight and maybe Kylie didn't know that. But great, go on Ozempic, who the fuck cares? But her saying, we need to have a larger conversation about the beauty standards we're setting. 
So I feel two types of way about this. Let me get my Stanley. Yeah, I'm a basic bitch. Mm-hmm. I got Stanley. I have two. I bought my mom one for Christmas. I'm like, no, if you don't, if you don't like this, you have to tell me because this is like a redneck status symbol. It's like a thing here. So if you don't want it, if you're not going to use it, just give it back. Not to be an Indian giver. Give it back. By the way, Indian giver is derogatory towards the white men who would give Indians something and then take it back. It's not derogatory towards Indians. Like, because they were people of their words. So you can use Indian giver. Yeah, and my mom's like, I don't want the Stanley. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Stanley and Indians. Two things, two opinions on this comment of Kylie. We have to have a larger conversation. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's your body, girl. Do whatever you want to it. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. I am a body autonomy absolutist, right? Get your tits done. Get them done 10 times. I think you look bizarre, maybe. Or I think you look, like, like I said, like maybe a centaur with all these fat transfers in places that, okay? But if that's what makes you happy, all right, dude, you do you. And more importantly, if that is affecting the self-esteem of other people, you know what I say, your triggers are your problem. Your self-esteem is your issue. Now, hold on. I'm also saying that as a grown woman, as a fully formed person. I grew up without social media, without the Kardashians. It, it, not like there was, I lived out on the prairie or something. There was, there was input for sure, but not to the degree that it is now. I'm not a young woman now. Well, <laughs> You know, I'm not a formative woman and I don't have a formative child. I don't, so I don't really have any skin, pun, in this game. So I think it's easier for me to say, do whatever you want. And like, it's people's own deal to work out their own self-esteem. But it is though. I mean, I think it is. I think it is. Like, you could say the same thing about flaunting wealth. Like that's just really disrespectful because some people don't have a lot of money. Okay. I see that. I see that. Objection sustained. But also that you, you showing or not showing your wealth doesn't affect how much wealth somebody else has. It's like the Schrodinger's cat thing. Do you know about that? It's complicated and kind of weird. But basically like your wealth is what it is whether you show it or not, it still exists. And I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I could see both sides of these arguments. What do you think? Do you think that these celebrities have a responsibility to like not be so fake? Again, my thing is like, if you're going to be fake, that's fine. Just be a little honest about it. You don't even have to be 100% honest. You want to get a little facelift on the down low? Who gives a shit? That's okay. But because it is your body. It's your body. But you know, if you are sitting here claiming you're all natural or something and you're just like surgerized to the gods, I don't think that you should do something with your body that is not authentic to what you want. Like get, get those implants, get the fillers, whatever. But yeah, maybe just disclose that. I don't know. But then I think like, why should you be obligated to do that? I go back and forth. I really can see both sides of this. I can. I mean, the girls I see out there who are like Kardashian wannabes, they were going to be a wannabe of somebody, right? The girls like who, who take the Kylie shots, like the Kylie pictures, and they've got Kylie surgery and Kylie lips and weird like hip, they have fat to contour their hip dips, you know, just weird shit. And they've got the exact same aesthetic. Like those are people with bad self-esteem bad. And the Kardashians didn't create that. Nature abhors a vacuum. Have you heard that, that phrase? It explains everything from the Kardashians to why every single shelf in my kitchen has to be filled. Has to be filled. I just have to find something to go there. Nature abhors a vacuum. So those people, these Kim clones, these Kardashian clones out there, they were going to be a clone of somebody because they are not a somebody. They have not done that work. They haven't filled that void. They have. They just haven't. And so the Kardashians, great, fine. It's going to be them. If it wasn't them, it might be, 
I don't even know. Somebody, somebody else would fill that void. So how much onus can we really put on the Kardashians as being responsible for this? They don't create weak people. They might turn up the volume on that weakness. They might give that weakness an outlet and a focal point, but they're not creating it. As I, I don't think that they're seeing it. It would be great. Wouldn't it be great if they were? If the Kardashians were responsible for the low self-esteem of women around the world, wouldn't that be fantastic? Because you could just shoot them all in the head and everyone would be fine. But guess what? That's not how self-esteem works. Self-esteem is a complicated issue. There's a million factors that go into us not feeling good and pop culture icons and what we see in the media is just one fragment of that. It's not the whole pie. It's, you know what the number one predictor of a young girl's self-esteem is going to be? how her mother feels about her own body. If your mom is like, oh, I'm so fat, guess what that little girl is gonna grow up saying? If her mom is a narcissist and she's always got her tits out, guess what that little girl is gonna grow up doing? So the Kardashians, yeah, they're, they're an opinion leader, but there is almost no one that outstrips the parents, nobody. Nobody replaces mom and dad. I mean, don't you wish that someone could, right? Don't you wish that I could latch on to like The Rock or something and be like, he's my father figure. No, he's not. He's an actor and he's making increasingly bad movies. Black Adam was unwatchable. But that would be great if I could be like, well, I didn't have a dad, but I have The Rock and his entire movie catalog, so I'm good. It doesn't work that way. It's very complicated. And again, the parents aren't even the full scope of what creates someone's self-esteem. There's a million factors. There's a million factors. So to put it all in the Kardashians, but then on the flip side, you can say, just because they're not the whole pie doesn't mean that they shouldn't try to be the best part of the pie that they can be. Clean up their side of the street, okay? And let, let the other chips fall where they may, all right. Yeah, you, I can absolutely see that argument, for sure. The question is, I don't know. I. I the Kardashians and their aesthetic, it's, it's interesting because you kind of want to know, does the tail wag the dog? Like, are they responding to the pressure of fame? Oh my God, I look fat in that photo. And there's a trillion photos taken of me every day. And oh my God, all these comments are saying that like, I have stupid nails. So I, I, I always have to, I have to get a manicure every two days. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like, which comes first? the surgery or the feedback. And I mean, look at us. If we don't understand this on the macro with the Kardashians, I don't know, let's boil it down to our day-to-day -day lives. Like, do we act and make a behavior and make a decision based on what people in our lives are telling us? Or, I don't know. I don't know. Here's what I do know. Kylie's full of shit. A lot of uh, filler products also, but also some shenanigans. This, what really stuck in y'all's crawl, which I get, is how fake this is for her to say. Like, really Kylie, really? We need to have a larger conversation about the beauty standards. Why don't you start with the man in the mirror, Kai? Because you're the one who is the youngest, who looks the most radically different. Radically different. I mean, you could say that about Chloe, for sure. Like, Chloe does look different. I mean, Kylie, I, I don't know. Who do you think looks more different, Chloe or Kylie? I gotta say Kylie. And to me, it's so much more disruptive what Kylie's done to herself because she did it at such a young age. Like, Chloe was divorced by the time she got all this, you know, and got really fit and whatever. And Chloe is very, very fit. You know, when people are like, she's on Ozempic, bitch, so am I. I don't have a six pack app. Okay, she's working hard in the gym. So why don't you back off her? Kylie, it's like she just kind of took the easy way out in terms of self esteem. So yeah, tell me who you think looks the most different. But it just, it's like Kylie, of. On one hand, yeah, she should be the person to be like, are we doing something weird? But on the other hand, Kylie, shut up because you're not gonna stop. 
You, you filmed that, what, three months ago? You look exactly the same, girl. You haven't had anything reduced or taken down. You're not taking normal, authentic, happy pictures on Instagram. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. So, and we know that. And so you saying that, it's just performative. It's woke chasing. It's trendy. It's stupid. And most of all, it's transparent. To me, this is them breaking the fourth wall and being like, oh, okay, your show is fake. You're fake, this whole family's fake, everything is fucking fake. Her saying that to me kind of torpedoed their whole season. Maybe their whole reputation. I mean, they're not going anywhere, but it's just like, dude, that's, Kylie, <laughs> shut up, man. You guys aren't gonna do anything different. What Are you gonna go, let me guess, let me guess. On this episode, they're gonna like go to a school and they're gonna tell people to just be yourself. No, be yourself. Just love yourself. I'm gonna put on a fat zone. Is that what they're gonna do? They're like once a year charitable endeavor? <sighs> no thanks. Just, just no thanks, dude. It's embarrassing. So I think that's what is so irritating is her fake accountability. Her fake accountability when she's not gonna do anything different. And of course she's telling this to her equally surgerized and centaurian friend Stasi and her surgerized family. And you know what? You know what? If someone came to me and was like, Shallon, I think you need to have a conversation about the beauty standard you're setting. I'd be like, get bent, leave me alone. I'm doing what I wanna do. Someone's triggers are their problems. I'm not gonna get fat again to make someone feel okay about themselves. I'm not gonna let my eyebrows grow together so then I'm not threatening anyone's self-esteem. I look how I wanna look. If someone has a problem with it. I mean, is that not the definition of body shaming? You should be ashamed of yourself for how you look. You look too good. Oh, you can look disgusting, that's amazing. But don't you dare look great. And listen, you might be saying, I don't think they look great. Fine. I kind of do. Kylie, no. But the other ones, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. This this video and this topic raises a lot of larger issues. What do you think? What do you think? Like, what should Kylie have said maybe in that moment or if they're going to touch on that subject? How should they have done it? What would have been a better way? Honestly, I think like full transparency would be better at this point. Because then it just ends it. It just ends ends it. When you lean in to whatever the haters are saying about you, they got nothing left to say. They got nothing left to say. Like, yeah, I'm on Ozempic. You want to die mad about it? How's that sound? Mm. Yeah, I had fillers once upon a time for a while. What's up? There's nothing left to say. It deads the argument. So I feel like if they just did an episode where like today, we're standing in front of a camera and we're telling all of you every single thing we've had done. Every single thing. I think women would be like, nice. I personally would wanna know like, how is Kim looking so young at 42? I, I have heard she's had a facelift. That's amazing. What doctor did you go to? How much was it? Like, tell me, I wanna book that doctor, damn. You know, Chloe, how did you get those abs? How did you lose all that fat? What do you eat every single day? Tell me. You want a new level of watchability? That's it. It's realness. And isn't it called reality TV? Because look, girls, if you're watching the Kardashians, and I feel like you might be, you guys got to remember that you're competing against people like me. I know. It doesn't sound like that would be true. You're a light, you're stratospherically above me but I'm offering people something that you're not, which is realness. And in this world of increasing disconnection and fractured lives and loneliness and isolation, connection is what people are looking for. And that comes with realness. Yeah, that aspirational glitzy glam thing is great. <sighs> Who has a friend that's like that? Who has a sibling that's like that? Who has a boyfriend that's like that? That's not what actually fosters happiness. It's connecting with people. It's connecting with people as much as you can through a lens. If you guys don't get that memo, yeah. What do you guys think about this?
tell me, um, let me know. And we're gonna be back next time. I'll see you later, Shalligators. And be sure to check out MD Hair. Click the link down below to save 70% off your first month. I'm gonna go put it on right now. I'll see you later, Shalligators.